everyone, Christian here, and I wanna talk about just how much coastal exposure palms can take. And um, I'm here at Venice Beach, or I'm here at Sharky's Beach at, at Sharky's on the pier, which is in, in the city of Venice. Um, Venice Beach is a little bit, about a mile or two north of here. And uh, I wanna talk about just, you know, we, as you've noticed, if you've been in a tropical area, that, you know, especially on the beach, that coconuts grow right there along the beach. And uh, the question is, what else will grow right along the beach here? So uh, I'm going to start by kind of like looking through here. Many places in Florida offer these catwalks, which basically help people, keep people from walking on the, the dunes. It's a good thing to do. It's elevated. You can see down below here. You can kind of see what's going on. There actually was once a palm right there, but it must have rotted. Something must have happened to it. So um, here we have a palmetto. This is all pretty much just like wild coastal Florida vegetation. Um, there's a few things that are not native here, like the, this yucca here. Um, but, you know, it, it, it doesn't look terribly out of place. But uh, basically the vegetation right here, we're looking at palmettos right here. And then we've got sea grapes, which are these guys here. Uh, they put out these little grape colored fruits that I have never eaten one but uh, the leaves themselves are very salty because they take in a they absorb a lot of the salt air that's nearby. And especially, the leaves are salty from, mostly from the ones that are coastal. So I tell people what they are, they're like, oh, well, why do they call it that? And I tell them, well, the, the leaves taste like grapes. So you should try it out. And they bite into it and they get a mouthful of salt and their mouth dries out. So it's a little bit of a stupid joke that I used to play on people I haven't done in a long time. Anyway. You know, you can see there's nice healthy palmettos here, and this is going to be almost all sand. There might be a little bit of, you know, obviously there's, um, there are, you know, there's a lot of organic material dropping down and kind of hanging out here, but these are reproducing. You can see little seedlings here. You can see here that these are nice big fronds growing here. Um, and now this is more, mostly shade, so this little guy, you know, is growing. They almost look like sable minor fronds, how big they are, but because they're mostly shade, they're going to be very floppy, a little bit larger. And, uh, you know, if we get a little further, you can see the new flushes on, or new leaves that come out on sea grapes are, have a copper to kind of maroon color to them. They're usually maroon and more sun. Um, and you can see this one's actually a little bit, a little bit darker. And if we go over here, and this is the other side of this catwalk that's kind of closer to the dunes. You can see there's palmettos here. They, they look a little, they're a little more dwarfed out. Um, they don't really get as tall. This one's pretty, I bet you that palm is almost 30 years old and there's a lot of little seedlings down here and then we actually get to this is the only one that I've really seen in the area uh, this is actually a saw palmetto here and these actually do excellent in the dunes they grow along most dunes in that you know in areas of Florida that still have uh, you know the, the natural uh, vegetation that haven't been plowed upon to build houses or other buildings so um, one thing that is not native to Florida is that glass of that glass bottle of Corona. That's not native, although often seen in habitat from uh, drunk tourists. And here we have another palmetto, literally growing like on the edge of this little sand hill. It looks like it was, it was almost dug out for it. And right above Ashley, right here, is actually a very dwarfed. And you see this happening right on the edge of really what, where the palmettos will grow. Is this uh, real dwarf of a palmetto? You know, skinny trunk, small crown. Um, and the leaves are kind of, they're very tattered from the wind, but they will grow and they will seed, you know, right next to it. We're right here, right up on the beach. The closest palmetto is going to be this one right there to the actual water. There's a couple seedlings over there and here. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're about a hundred yards from the water, I'd say. And that's about as close as you're going to get a palmetto to grow to like roaring to like moving salt water. I mean, by a river they'll grow right up against a brackish uh, brackish water in the river like if you're at the mouth of a, the Caloosahatchee River or the Mayaca River or the Peace River in Punta Gorda um, all these places will have palmettos growing right up against the shore there because the water isn't moving, the salt air isn't kind of like blowing up against the, uh, the, the palms most of the time so, <clears throat> and you can see other stuff, uh, I just call this sea grass I, I forget it's actual real name here and it's a pretty beefy palmetto there. And just, just the difference between, say, you know, these ro more robust ones like here, this trunk with, uh, you know, this crown here and 
that the one I mentioned over there, the big floppy crown versus these very dwarfed out ones is literally only 20 or 30 feet. So they kind of have, it's almost like the tree, when you go up in altitude, the tree line, you see the, the trees get more dwarfed and dwarfed out. Same thing happens in the, the salt water and the sand here, the dunes. You just get palms that are uh, much more dwarfed out, even this, you know, within 10 or 20 feet of each other, just because of the lack of any nutrients whatsoever and the battering of uh, the salt water and uh, salt air. So, um, you know, it is kind of interesting to see just what will grow so close to the water. I've seen stuff growing in sounds or next to the water in sounds like uh, Satakentias, um, you know, a lot of dipsis, but they look fairly ratty. The Satakentias don't, they do grow right by the water, but they usually grow on cliffs by water in where they're from in uh, the southern islands of Japan there in the Ryukyu Islands. But I really want to focus on Florida natives, uh, the Sable, the Saranoa repens and Sable palmetto. And you can see here that you kind of, there aren't really any palmettos beyond this point. It's because it's kind of like the, the point here. There's, there's this one here and, sorry, I was going to move over. This one here about uh, 20 yards in front of me. And that's about it. Uh, then you're just going to straight sand. I mean, not much grows beyond that point anyway. So they can tolerate quite a bit of salt. And it's kind of interesting to see them go from like robust trunked palms to dwarf little plants that are barely hanging on to the edge. So I figured I'd show you guys that. I hope it was interesting. If you did, if you liked it, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. You'll see many other palm reviews or palm discussions like this. And I do go live quite a bit, so hit that bell notification. You'll see when I go live. If you guys have any questions about other palms that like to grow on the coast or will grow well on the coast, any coastal areas, leave them down below and I'll get back to everyone as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.